Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to be playing the role of plumber and start soldering up our copper pipes that is going to run the water through our sprinkler system. So I've got a number of different things in front of me, which we'll go over very quickly. Uh, we're going to be soldering copper pipes. I've never done that before, so it's definitely going to be a learning experience. Uh, probably, you know, do a couple things wrong, learn, learn some new things about soldering. Um, so obviously we've got a bunch of copper. We're going to be essentially assembling the four valves in our system using the copper. So we're going to use a lot of pieces like these straight pieces. We're going to use some corner pieces. We're going to use some three way intersections. And then one of the most important pieces is this threaded adapter, which is going to allow us to essentially put our pumps on and off the system, hook things up. If things are broken, if things are not working, we can take them off the system without pulling the whole system off the wall. Um, it's it's soldering copper pipes. Uh, well, obviously we're going to use a blowtorch. We've got some solder. We've got some flux. And of course, we've got some safety gear, you know, some gloves, the apron. Uh, I'm going to pull my sleeves down make sure I don't have skin exposed. Uh, and the approach on this is going to be a little bit interesting. I'm going to just do it the way that I think it should be done, which is probably wrong. And then after the fact, I'm going to go do a little bit of research, maybe watch some videos, figure out the proper way to solder pipes uh, if you were a real plumber, and then figure out what I did right or wrong uh, so I and you all can, can learn from that experience. So that's the plan for today. Let's get started. So after doing a little bit of research online and watching some videos, these are the common steps for soldering copper pipes. As you can see, it's not too complicated, nor should it be. Uh, the first step is obviously cleaning the copper. Um, this includes both ends, making sure that, you know, all any kind of surface spots are removed and that the surface is essentially clean and a little bit roughed up, a little bit scoured, which will give the solder something to stick to. The second step is applying flux to both ends of the pieces. Uh, the flux kind of helps just kind of guide the solder the areas that you want it to go. And finally, the third step is applying heat. You want to use an adequate heat source and you want to apply the heat essentially to the joint. So in our case, uh, it's going to be those kind of elbow connectors, those T connectors. Uh, we want to apply the heat there and essentially pull the solder in using a capillary action from those kind of straight copper pieces. Uh, and then finally, if we were doing this in the wall for like a bathroom fixture or something like that, we would want to use gravity to our advantage. We'd want to start at the bottom of the, the work pieces and work our way up. Uh, that way the, the solder is flowing downwards um, and any of that heat is rising and it's helping to kind of warm and heat the areas uh, that you're going to get to rather than the areas that you've already done. So in this next part of the video uh, we're going to be going through and, and soldering the copper pipes uh, and we're going in with no knowledge. This is kind of our blind attempt. Uh, this is going in before we did any of this research. Watch these videos and kind of learn these proper steps and proper technique. So before we get started on soldering our copper pipes together we need to clean up the pieces. Uh, we want to make sure basically there's no debris no burrs, no kind of gunk or contamination on the surface. So I'm using a little bit of steel wool and just kind of scouring the surface to remove any of those kind of contaminants. And also by kind of scouring the surface and roughing it up a little bit, it gives the solder something to stick to rather than if it was a nice smooth surface. Um, so nothing too, too crazy here. A little bit of flux, a little bit of steel wool just to clean up uh, the pieces before soldering. So this is our initial run at attempting to solder together the two copper pipes, going in with no knowledge. Um, as you can see, we did clean both the pipes. Um, we did apply flux, so that was a good thing. Uh, but you can also see that we're using kind of a small flame. It's a, it's a pen kind of blowtorch rather than a bigger, more adult blowtorch. Uh, and we're also applying that heat right at the point we want to solder. And then you can see that we're doing an actually a common mistake here is that we're using the flame to melt the solder rather than using the heat of the pipe to melt the solder. And when you do that, you just basically end up with a bad joint. Um, 
because the material may not be as hot as the flame hitting the solder directly then the solder is not going to stick to that material as well and you're going to end up with pockets and potentially air holes or or just not a good strong joint uh, so a couple mistakes here in this initial run So this is our next attempt. This is after doing the research, reading about it, watching the videos, understanding the technique of solder, soldering copper pipes, uh, and kind of a lot of similarities between the last video. We started off with uh, making sure the pipes were, pipe book pieces were clean. We applied flux. And in this case, we're going to use a regular size blowtorch so we have a nice, huge heat source. Uh, and you can see that we're applying that uh, to, the, to the threaded screw, so the, the joint that we're trying to make, rather than at that joint or at that solder. Also see in this case that we're using the heat of the pipe to melt the solder rather than the flame. Uh, so that way we know that the materials of both pieces are at the right temperature that they're going to melt that solder we're going to have that capillary action where the solder is going to get pulled into that joint uh, and we're going to end up with a good strong sealed joint Then, of course, after the whole piece is cooled, we can take a look at the finer details of what we've done. And in this picture here, you can see that that, that capillary action worked really well and that the solder was pulled all the way through the joint and actually overflowed using gravity, another part of the, the steps. And, and we ended up with a good solid joint that is likely to be leak proof. Well, that about wraps things up for today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. It was a lot of fun to make. Definitely learned some things today uh, and had a good, good experience with it all. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please let us know in the comments. And then of course, if you wanna be notified of videos like this in the future, please hit that subscribe button. That goes a long way to supporting this channel. Uh, thanks and we'll see you next time.